All right, guys, you requested it. So here it is. This is my hacking with PowerShell video. Now, you know, just a catchy title, Black Hat PowerShell, kind of parodying off of, you know, the Black Hat Python book, if you ever read that one, and uh, Black Hat Go. There's like a few of them, right? But uh, by all means, this is for educational purposes. Don't use this without um, the authorization to do so. Don't do anything malicious with this. But let's before we really dive into this, let's jump into... Let's understand the big picture, right? When would you actually need PowerShell? Now, as a pen tester, I don't actually use PowerShell too much, if ever. Uh, however, if you are wanting to be a red teamer, for sure, this is something that you need to be very familiar with. Uh, I know a lot of the tooling is starting to be built in C Sharp, but for the quick scripting and the quick enumeration, it is still essential that you understand PowerShell. So the context in which you would use this is say you're doing an assessment of an internal, a company's internal network, right? Because pretty much, I, I don't know what this, the statistic that I heard was about 99% of all corporate uh, networks are using Windows Active Directory. But uh, to be honest, I've never seen one or heard of one that is not using Windows Active Directory. So if you are trying to do some internal network pen testing or internal testing against users or trying to attack a company from the inside, you will need to know PowerShell. Now, the caveat is as pen testers, we're normally more focused on uh, testing you know, technology rather than processes and people. But if you are doing some network penetration testing, then you would still need PowerShell because that would allow you to test the configuration of, you know, say the domain controller, how they have their Active Directory stuff set up. Are there any trusts that you can maybe abuse, right? You know, we covered Bloodhound on a previous video. What I particularly do in my role in my company, right, doesn't involve really testing this side of things. But I do suppose for some pen testers, depending on what kind of penetration testing you're doing, this could be useful. But just understand the big picture. This is internal network stuff. So in order to aid in this kind of, I didn't want to just tell you guys about commands and stuff. I wanted to actually show you some stuff. So to aid in this, I am connected to TryHackMe's uh, Attractive Directory uh, CTF or whatever. I am on a domain controller right now. I have an administrator PowerShell session launched here. Now, the way that I like to think of PowerShell, the, what really helped me, right? I'm a Linux guy. I've come from Linux and uh, I learned that first. That was the first command line stuff I learned. So, you know, maybe a lot of you might be in a similar position. So I've created this little note sheet here, a little cheat sheet, if you will, to kind of help you make sense of how a lot of these PowerShell commands translate into bash, right? So for example, the get help command is a lot, is pretty similar to the man pages. So you can run get help on any command. So let's just think of a command here, right? There's a command called get process. We can get all the processes that are running on the system, kind of like PS, uh, but you could run get help on that to uh, get some info there. So I could run get help, get process, I believe. And uh, oh, it looks like it's talking about updating it. So it's, it's gonna go out and try and update it. But basically what that would do is it would go ahead and tell me basically like the manual page of like what the command is used for, like what your potential options are and uh, different things like that. I don't necessarily want to run this right now. Maybe I probably shouldn't have told it to run. Let's see if I can just fire up another window here. Oops, if I can choose the right thing here. But uh, yeah, there's a number of commands that we can use as well. So, you know, there, there's also get command. This is really good in privilege escalation situations. So you OSCP guys should listen up here. Uh, if you want to see what commands you can possibly run, if you run get command, that will give you a listing of all the commands that your account is able to run. And so in the case of an administrator, obviously a lot of commands there. So I'm going to go ahead and kill that. 
so uh, and and that I, I said it's kind of like Witch, but really it's not entirely because I don't know that it's checking. Uh, I don't know that it works the same way under the hood, but so a lot of these things are not a direct translation as PowerShell is fundamentally different than Bash, right? But this is just a shorthand way that you can kind of understand, kind of put things together, piece things together, how uh, a lot of these PowerShell commands uh, kind of relate to Bash commands. Now, the biggest thing, I probably should have led with this, but the biggest difference between Bash and PowerShell or Linux and PowerShell, right? With Linux... Everything is just a file, right? You're always just dealing with strings, right? With Bash, you're always dealing with strings all the time. Everything is a string. In PowerShell, everything is an object. So you're always getting objects back. And from there, you can you can uh, really fine-tune what you're looking for and so that you just uh, extract a string. But by default, you're dealing with objects instead. So that's the main thing you got to understand. Like all these command commandlets here are going to return objects. So, uh, this is basically your mapping here. Get child item is ls. That's basically ls. Now you can use. There are some shorthands here, right? Like there's get child item, for example, that I can run. So if I run a get child item, that's like an ls. But I can also run ls as a shorthand, right? So they have some. Uh, basically. They've linked some of these commands to other commands. So like the ls command is linked to get child item. So when I run ls, or if I run dir, it's the exact same thing as if I would have run get child process, which that can kind of help as a shorthand or get child item. Sorry. And I think there's also shorthands like this. You can do like abbreviations here. GCI for get child item also works. So there's little shorthands like that that. Uh, are definitely helpful to know. But I won't go through all of these. You can see them here on your screen. But you have different things like sort. Get content is the same thing as cat, like concatenating basically. And uh, measure is kind of like if you were to do a WC-L. And so a lot of this stuff, you're going to, like I said, you're dealing with objects, right? So you're going to need to pipe a lot of things, right? Take the output of this object, pipe it into this other command, pipe that into this, pipe that into this, and you have like your pipeline of, you know, similar to in Bash, how we use the uh, the pipe a lot in order to extract specifically fine-tuning what information we want to get. The only difference is we're dealing with objects instead of strings. So here you can see they even have like a, a grep, right? So for all of you people that are like, Love Linux for the ability to use grep. Well, you can actually do that in PowerShell using select string. You can actually pass it regex and everything. So really, uh, really nice uh, functionality that is available. I think a lot of people aren't aware that they can do this stuff on Windows uh, through PowerShell. You can even like search for files on your system, right? But this is just your basic overview of PowerShell. What I really want to dive into in this video is I want to dive into the the hacker side, right? Because anyone can learn. There's nothing black hat about this, right? This is like just your standard, like this is how PowerShell works. I had to lead with that. I had to give that foundation. Now let's get into the the interesting security implications of the stuff, right? So with that being said, let's check out, uh, check out this uh, this tool here, PowerView. PowerView was uh, created by this guy, Harmjoy. He's created some insane... Uh, tools, tools that uh, have been used by like everyone, right? He's the co-founder of Empire, Bloodhound, which we've already demoed on this channel. Basically, this guy is like insane when it comes to uh, Windows, you know, PowerShell and even C Sharp. And he's, he's, he's like pretty incredible security developer. So he has the script here, PowerView, which basically uh, allows you to run some commandlets that he has created that are useful, extremely useful for doing your enumeration in an internal network. All right, yeah, so let's just go ahead and demo this PowerView uh, script here on this domain controller. Now, you saw the GitHub link if you need to go ahead and download it, but in this case, like TryHack Me, they've already put it on the box and everything. I'll show you how to interface with it. Uh, so, 
every time I type this comes up, unfortunately, so it makes it a little difficult to clear screen. But I'm going to go into the downloads folder. That's where this is located. And you see powerview.ps1. Anytime you see a .ps1 file, that is a uh, PowerShell uh, file that we can run. So I've already ran the PowerShell execution policy bypass command. Pull up arrow so you can see it. And basically, this just makes it so that I can run script. It's not We're not actually bypassing anything per se. We're just making it so we can run scripts, basically. And uh, <clears throat> now that we've done that, we can... We can actually import the PowerView module, and this is how we're going to do it, All right? This is the syntax for that. So now with that, you won't see any output or anything, but we've imported the PowerView uh, module. So now we can actually run all of his uh, commands that he had uh, in order to better enumerate this network. So let's just do exactly that. There's oh, there's tons of of stuff you can run. I'm not going to obviously cover all of it. That would take forever. But let me just give you some of the highlights, some of the things to get you started. And you can check out his cheat sheet. I'll link it in the description below and you can really uh, run with it and learn a lot of stuff maybe specific to your situation, right? <clears throat> On an as-needed basis or whatever you want to do. But yeah, one, one thing that really stands out to me is we're actually able to get a list of all the operating systems on a particular domain. So... If we use the get uh, net computer commandlet, not compartment, but get net computer, and we can specify the full data flag, get all this stuff, and we can select the operating system. So we can really target the OSs that are running here. You see there's three computers on this uh, domain. You got a server 2019 and two Windows 10 boxes. And uh, see, we use the pipe here, right? If we didn't, we would get like a, an object back with all this data. And we don't really care about a lot of this stuff, right? So we specifically said, hey, let's just select the uh, operating system. That's one of these fields here. There's so many, it's kind of hard to spot out. Maybe you guys see it somewhere here, but like... We could just specify log on count if we if we just wanted that, right? We could we could say select uh oh, we could say select name, right? We could see all the names, right? We can see select name and the last log on if we want. Right? So we can we can grab that's the nice thing about these objects. We can grab what we want. Right? Now this get net computer commandlet, you have to import power view in order to use this as a power view. Uh, commandle it here. So that's why we imported it. Um, we can also get a list of all the users on the domain, right? Because not only are the systems important, but we want to know about the users. So we can use get net user. And that will give us a whole bunch of stuff. So we can say to select uh, CN here. I think that's for a common name, but I'm not exactly sure on that. So we can get all the names of stuff here. Here happens to be the flag of uh, one of the challenges from Try Hack Me here. But yeah, you can see the administrator, admin two, machine one, all this stuff, SQL service even. So definitely good stuff to have. Now you can even use you know regular PowerShell to do enumeration as well. It's just that this makes it, this is really specific to the common stuff you'd need to enumerate in a pen test. So that's why it's really handy to use PowerView. You can also get a list of all the groups on the system just by using, you know, vanilla Windows commands, right? Like net local group you can run that. And that will give us all the groups on the on the system. And uh, so, so there's different ways to use it like that. This is just a very introductory manner of using this. Now, let's go back here, right? You have uh, a, a whole cheat sheet here of various use cases for power view, different things you can do, getting really nitty gritty with it. But I would definitely say that is a great way to uh, get started with this stuff. And this is just the first video uh, on PowerShell. I'm sure I'll do more in the future that can uh, get even more in depth with this stuff. I basically just wanted to give you that uh, overview as well as kind of diving into some of the technicals, what you can do and how it can you relate back to security uh, as well, not just teach you how to run commands that any system administrator would need. So just giving you that whole 
overview, and we'll dive more in in the future. If that sounds interesting to you, let me know. If, if it's not, then also let me know down in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe and check out uh, what you need to know playlist for OSCP if you want to get uh, a little bit more knowledge on that, you can definitely use some PowerShell in the OSCP, uh, certainly in the labs with the Active Directory stuff, but even on the exam just to enumerate uh, stuff after you maybe get your initial shell and you're trying to get that privilege escalation. Uh, you can you know get a PowerShell shell on the box and uh, provided the box isn't so old that it doesn't support PowerShell. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely do that and... Uh, maybe use it to aid in your privesc, just enumerating the actual system you're working on. Um, maybe not so much the PowerView stuff, but you can definitely use your vanilla PowerShell to do a lot of this stuff as well. So yeah, I will see you guys over in those videos. Thanks for watching.